You're listening to episode two of the Halton Hills podcast. Today, I'm going to talk about what type of strategy do you need in order to find a perfect townhouse home to rent? Let's go. Welcome back to the Halton Hills Podcast. I'm your host, Darren Williams, and today we're going to talk about a couple of things. Number one, I'm going to give you a strategy that you can use as a tenant to find the perfect house to rent that's within your budget and how you can be first in line every single time. So when you're searching for a property that's in the marketplace, whether it be a condo to rent, a townhouse to rent, a basement to rent, or even a detached home um, to move into... Right now, it's very challenging to find a property within your price range, considering the prices have skyrocketed, which has pushed a lot of the buyers out of the marketplace, giving how much they can afford a mortgage. And those prices are so high, that's what's happening now is that the landlords are charging even more of a premium to rent out their homes because they have such high costs and high mortgages just to carry those costs. So because this has such been a big challenge in our marketplace, we now have several people that are searching for a home to rent because buying is just not an option today that even trying to find a home that matches their budget within a certain area is very challenging to find. And if they are successful, now if they are able to find that perfect home to rent, there's a high chance that it's already gone before you've even had an opportunity to see it, or it's been leased to somebody after you've seen it. So it's not only challenging that you, people can't purchase a home at a certain price range, but now it's when they find a home in their budget, there's some times where that home is gone before they've even had a chance to look at it. So what I'm going to dive into is I'm going to dive into some strategies that you can use that you can apply right now into your searching for a home to lease. Now, these strategies that I'm going to share with you have helped my clients be first in line and give them a greater chance than allowing the landlord to choose them versus someone else. And it's, it's, re- it's really simple when you break it down to the effectiveness as how you can use websites and how you can follow up with people and how you can create a little bit of urgency, motivation uh, to your advantage. Here's number one, the newspaper. How many people search in the newspaper for a rental property? And now you might say, well, Darren, I don't, I don't use the newspaper to look for rental properties. It's outdated information. And I agree with you that the newspaper is out of date with information, but what's very specific about the newspaper and why you want to look at it is because there are other landlords that are still using the newspaper to advertise their properties. I would call these the old school landlords. And the reason is, is because it's easier and cost effective for them just to put it out on the newspaper. It's going to be shopped around locally. You just call the number and the process begins. When you call right away to that number, and let's say you found it at 11 o'clock at night and you call 8 30, 9 o'clock in the morning or even earlier, What you're looking to do is by calling them, you're trying to put yourself first in line. And then you're going to book appointment as soon as possible. Then the next step is when they call you back or if you uh, get them on the phone is that you want to create urgency and you want to see it like right away. The reason why you want to create urgency is because the landlord, number one thing, is that they're trying to recoup their costs as soon as possible. And the more that they spend time, which costs them money, or the more that it costs them to advertise and keep this thing empty, or they're not able to find somebody. So if you create urgency and you say, hi, I'd like to see your unit at 123 Main Street. And you say, listen, I'm going to get off work at a certain time. I could see you at noon or I could see you after work, but I want to come by and I want to have a look at it. I'll be able to let you know within less than 24 hours. And if the unit does work for my living arrangement, then I'll be able to provide you with a deposit right away. The magical words to the landlord is that they're going to be able to tell me in less than 24 hours 
if they're going to rent out this unit and I can be done, I don't have to have any more phone calls, don't have to answer any more questions. As a landlord, they're going to say, let's just go and sort this thing out. And maybe they'll rent it out and I'll be done with this within less than 24 hours. So because you've now created urgency and motivation and you're being polite and saying, I'm going to be able to let you know right away or less than 24 hours. Now, all of a sudden, the landlord is going to be like, let's make this thing happen. This is only going to give you a strategy to get to those local people, those local landlords, people that don't want to spend a lot of money trying to advertise it. So using the newspaper can be really effective if you have the right strategy and you use it with the tools online and you, you speak to them, you create urgency, you give them motivation and you let them know that you can make a decision right away. This is going to put them high on the list of possible candidates. And the whole purpose of this is to allow you as a tenant to be in a better position to say yes or no. So the next strategy is going to be Kijiji.ca. It's free. A lot of landlords use it. Uh, they don't run any cost to it. And you'll notice that when you get on Kijiji, there's prices that are all over the map. They're, they're all over the map. And some are in your price range and some aren't in your price range. But here's what's really important. The very first thing that you should do is you should put an ad that you're searching for a particular unit or property within a certain area and that you're looking to move in by a specific date. Here's a tip on price. Give yourself a budget of a hundred plus plus or less dollars because there's going to be some landlords that are out there that are looking for, let's say 1500, but you can afford 1400 or vice versa. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get to a point where they're calling you before they put it up on the marketplace so you can make a decision whether or not the property works for you. And if the difference in you renting it or not is $100, well, at least now you're only talking about the $100 difference versus not being able to move into any property. The reason that your ad is there to basically fish a landlord into messaging you. The landlord wants to save time and money, so your ad just helps them to sift and sort before even spending a bunch of time. So this is a great tool to allowing you to fish for a landlord. So when you get in Kijiji and you put your ad up, you can use email or text message, however way that works best for you. Let's say that you put your ad up and now you're going to start searching for the landlord and you're going to start replying to ads. When you're replying to ads, you want to give the landlord more than hi, I'm searching and is this listing still available? Let the landlord know that you are looking for a particular property and you're looking to take possession within your possession date and that you would love the opportunity to come and see his property as soon as possible and within 24 hours or less, I can decide whether or not this property is for me and I'll be able to give you a deposit to show my commitment. Now, if you received this message, the motivation, the timelines, being able to make a decision versus, hi, I'm searching for a property. Is it still available? If you're a landlord, which one are you going to look at? You know, which one's going to be more appetizing for you? So you're going to, the landlord is going to look at this email and say, I'm going to get back to this person as soon as possible. When you do this and you start messaging people, I suggest that you, you get on a Word document or use Google Docs or use Evernote and you're going to copy and paste this message to make it sound that you are a human being speaking to somebody because you're not going to write this a, a bunch of times, you know, if you're constantly searching and searching and searching, just copy and paste this to every email that you send out. So it has a little bit more uh, care, a, a little bit more uh, human feeling to it versus it just being a business type email. People respond to that a lot more effectively. The next place is you're going to want to check the Facebook marketplace. The Facebook marketplace is such a big tool to use nowadays is because let's say if that if you're searching for a bedroom, a house, um, some tools, whatever your hobby is, you can go on the Facebook marketplace. You could say that you're looking for X. If there's no items that match what you're looking for, you can indicate that you want a notification that's sent to you right to your mobile device or your 
computer. And so you can set up your own search for anything on the Facebook marketplace. So if a two bedroom or a three bedroom or a condo comes up within a certain radius of a certain amount of kilometers in a specific town or city, you're going to get notification up there. So number one on Facebook marketplace, set up a search criteria that matches what you're looking for. So the next thing is to create an ad, whatever it is that you're searching for in a budget price range with a completion date and to private message you. So by creating a Facebook marketplace, Facebook landlords are going to put up their property so that they're able to lower their cost and find somebody to rent out their property. So Facebook Marketplace is a great tool that is not being utilized in the market, period. So the next strategy is Facebook Groups. Now, this is a one that's being used, I would say, more than the other three. And what's happening is that if you get up into one of our group sites, there's the Georgetown Tell and Sell. There's also Halton Hill Social social Media. There's, There's a bunch of them. But Georgetown Tell and Sell... If you're to say, hey, I'm looking for a two-bedroom basement apartment in Georgetown, could anybody let me know what's available? You're going to get several different people that are going to give you a a couple of different options. You're also going to get people who are going to at other people. So using the at symbol to say, hey, Reggie, this person's looking for a basement apartment. Maybe Reggie wants to rent it out to this person. So Facebook groups are good at getting out the message that you're searching for a two bedroom apartment. Now, the only challenge with this is that there's a lot of other people also looking for two bedroom basement apartments or houses, and you're going to end up competing with them because as a member of that group, when you post that message, other people are also going to see your comments or other people's comments that they too have information or properties that could possibly work out for them. So here's a strategy that I would you would want to look at is that anytime that anyone, including yourself, post on these types of community pages, follow the conversation of people who actually have a unit that's available or they're at symboling somebody that they possibly could have a basement apartment. So when you have your Facebook group open and you've created your ad or you've created your message within the group that you're searching for a two-bedroom, a three-bedroom townhouse or condo, follow the comments and follow and respond to people who tag other people in it. You're going to have to sift and sort through the messages. What's also good about Facebook groups is that as other people create their own messages and that they're in search of two-bedrooms or three-bedrooms or condos, you can also follow that conversation. So if somebody says, I'm looking for a two bedroom and then somebody chimes in within like two minutes of it, then you can then message that person and say, Hey, I noticed that you had a two bedroom or three bedroom uh, townhouse available. So let's say that another person puts a, a message a couple of days later that they're also looking for two bedroom, three bedroom home condo. And you are following this thread and you notice that somebody you know, Kim says, I have a, I have a, I have a home that I want to rent out or a basement apartment. As a observer, you could actually message Kim and jump over that person who put that ad up and say, Hey, listen, I've been looking for a home that matches. So when you do find someone, when you find somebody that has what you're looking for, then you're going to want to go back into the script, the script that you're using in your Kijiji ads and your Facebook marketplace messages is to say that, number one, I want to be able to see it as soon as possible. You want to be first in line. Number two, you want to say that, listen, I'm going to be able to get out there within the next couple of hours, if not tonight. And within 24 hours, I'm going to be able to make a decision or less whether this property works for me. And on top of that, I'll be able to give you a deposit right away. That's just part of using a system of how you can actually obtain finding a property that will work for you. Now, let's say that you don't find a property going through the Facebook groups. There's nothing available. Then my next strategy, my next suggestion would be go to the the largest property pool 
online, which is realtor.ca. So realtor.ca is usually people's first road, but in my scenario, it's the last. And the reason why it's the last is because realtor.ca creates a lot of friction between the tenant and the landlord. Friction, I mean resistance, which is you can't physically or get in contact with the landlord directly. The landlord has their own representation by a brokerage salesperson slash broker. And so they are looking to find somebody who has the urgency, who can pay for consistently, who has the credit worthiness, and that will go and jump through hoops to get this property. Now it's for a landlord, this is the ultimate protection. It's the ultimate protection because they're having someone else, a professional, you know, review the file before they even see the offer to lease. And so the realtor is going to do a lot of the upfront work to making sure that before the person sees a property or before they get to the next steps, they're already jumped through a bunch of hoops and the landlord can make a decision based on all the findings. So if we just found a property that's on realtor.ca today and we said, can we get in there this afternoon? There's a big chance that we might not even be able to get in there until the weekend anyways, because the realtor is the one who controls the showings or they have tenants that need 24 hours or the realtor has, we have to coordinate with the realtor schedule in order to get in to see the property. So during this time period, when we're just trying to get information and get the appointments set up, the realtor could possibly ask us a series of questions of when we want to get into, you know, what kind of job do we have? There's going to be a lot of qualification questions. It's either going to happen before or during, but they're going to come. Now, this is the part that makes everybody uncomfortable. The landlord's first goal is to find a AAA tenant that can pay consistently over time without any hiccups. They don't want to have any challenges with the, the tenant. They just want to be able to rent it out, not have any headaches. The tenant pays on time. That's what they're looking for. When you find a property and you want to work with a realtor, the very first thing that they're going to do is they're going to figure out, you know, how do you want to be represented? And this is not a podcast that I'm going to explain representation, but the, the realtor right now represents the landlord and the realtor brokerage has to fi figure out how are they going to represent you as a tenant? They're going to represent you as a customer or they're going to represent you as a client. So they're going to talk to you about how that agency is going to work. The next step, once you decide on what's going to be the best thing for you, you're going to then fill out an a rental application. And it's going to list a series of information. It's going to give the realtor enough information to then do a credit search on you. So the big thing with realtor.ca is that you're going to have to fill out a rental application. You're going to have to determine what type of agency, you know, how you want to be represented with the realtor. And they're going to pull a credit report on you. That's not a bad thing. Some people don't like pulling credit information. But what it does is that if you're comfortable with this is now not only does it match your words that you're, you know, you're a great super tenant, you pay on time, you, you know, want to move in April 1st by them having the credit report, it just verifies to the landlord and say, listen, when you're looking at Jane Smith's rental application and the landlord's observing it and saying her credit score is 680 or better, she has a full-time job, part-time job, two jobs, but she makes a certain amount of money per month. She's able to afford, you know, all the utilities and the costs associated to the home. Here's her debt obligation. And here's the money that she has left to spend over. Gives the landlord a really clear idea of exactly how much money is left after the month of expenses. Then the landlord can make a decision on if this is the right tenant for them. Realtor.ca is a great place as a first avenue. And you don't want to look at any of the other strategies you're going to want to pair yourself up with a realtor real fast that's going to take care of the rental applications and pull the credit score for you and explain to you the agency so that you can focus on looking at a specific rental home versus dealing with all the paperwork once you do find one. There's a little bit more homework that's involved. A lot of people use it. It's a great source. Just check it out. So I'll give you a couple of extra tips here. Uh, one I didn't talk about, which was Craigslist. Uh, you want to Put an ad up on Craigslist. Some people use it. Just depends on which market you're at. But I wouldn't. I would not 
not use it. I would put up an ad saying that you're looking for a property. I would also cruise that because you never know. Some people might use that platform versus Kijiji. The next tip I would have for you is I would definitely recommend sending out an email to the general managers of the brokerages in town and let them know that you're searching for a property within a certain time frame, and you also have your deposit ready to go. You just need a place. Now, hopefully they can re refer you to a realtor or you know, maybe they might have, and this is a big thing, maybe they might have within their own agents who have other properties that aren't even up on the market that they know that are becoming vacant. If you have a friend that's in the, in the real estate business, check out with them, but don't limit your search to them. Just keep plugging away at it. You're going, you're bound to find something. So just keep going. Those are some of the tips and strategies that I would use that if you and I were face to face, this is what I would be suggesting for you to do. And uh, you can have a lot of success. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it at the end of the day. And that's going to wrap up today's episode. I am your host, Darren Williams. Thanks so much for listening to the Halton Hills podcast. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to the Halton Hills podcast.com subscriber list on the right side of the page. You can subscribe as an insider to the podcast. And what's great about this is that as our guests come on and as businesses share with some insight, we're going to provide you with deals of the week, secret deals. I don't know what they are. You're going to have to subscribe to find out about it, but I'm, I'm sure that you're not going to want to miss out. Also, you'll get up to date on new podcast episodes. Now, if you have an idea for the show, if you want to leave us some feedback, go to facebook.com forward slash Halton Hills podcast. Let us know if there's any guests or any questions that you have about the show that you want to get answers to. Uh, let's continue this conversation. So until then, until next time, guys, take care of yourself. Stay safe. Talk to you guys real soon.